Hey everyone, I'm Jackie Latran. And I'm Joseph Wolfgram, and we're RV Adventures with Pets. Today, we're going to talk about the catio. The catio? What is a catio? The catio, what is a catio? It is a patio for cats, of course. And right back here behind us is our catio. So when we started thinking about living full-time in an RV, we wanted to make sure our boys were really happy. When we lived in a stationary home, we had a humongous catio. I mean, we were like six feet tall, five feet wide, and the boys were out there all the time and they loved it. And we didn't want to take it away from them. Joseph and I start researching different options on how we can create a catio. And we looked and we looked, we looked on YouTube, we looked on Pinterest, we looked on different Facebook groups, and we couldn't find anything that was easy to do, uh, easy to replicate. And so we thought long and hard and we found this amazing catio here on Amazon and it fully collapsed for travel, um, for ease of travel. And we went through all sorts of iterations, like, well, do we get a table and a tall thing and we put it on a window? And then how do we like seal it against the RV so they can't squeeze out uh, from, you know, in between that cage and the coach? And we went through all sorts of different iterations and everything super complex requires modifications to the coach, drilling and hardware and all sorts of things that we didn't want to do. <laughs> well, we figured it out with the help of some family and friends. This is the simplest, easiest, most cost effective and I think effective catio you can put on your RV. And you know what? The system that we have right now works so well. It is so easy to put up. It is incredibly easy to take down. The boys are contained, they're happy. It is such a wonderful, easy thing that you can do for your own babies. I want Cat to... babies, don't put human babies in there. <laughs> no human babies. <laughs> the only thing your motorhome or trailer needs is a rail. Now, 99% of Class A motorhomes and trailers have a rail that hold the awnings and things like that, and it's always the length of the coach, which means there's a little bit left over. On ours, we had about three or four feet left over right in front of a window where our catio access door is. So uh, check that out. I never noticed the rails before we did this, and now I've been looking. They almost all have it, so super easy to do. Let's do it. Here we go. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is just lift this up. And it's like a big puzzle piece. You just gotta kind of play with it and see which direction it moves. Watch your fingers. <laughs> so now we have the basic structure. We need to put the sidewall in, so hang out to your side. And I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna pull this piece out and this up. And then I have to hook all of, all of these little hooks into place hold it. There's four on each side. And I'm just going to pop these two in. And then I have to do the top ones. Perfect. My side's done. Okay. Hold it solid for me. I got it. One thing that's helpful is the person holding it um, kind of puts a little slack on it so you've got enough room on the side here to pick these things up. Once you've got it unfolded like this, starting at the bottom and making sure these sides clip in, working your way to the top is the best way to keep from struggling going back Kinda and forth. Kind of like me, that's what he's trying to point out. <laughs> and then it makes it very solid. Well, look at that, voila. So one of the things we did, these plastic trays just set on top of these wire shelves. We uh, drilled some holes here and just zip tied them into place and that makes them one piece. What we found is the wind was blowing them off and the, ca and the cats would jump off them and they would flip off the shelves. That, this has really solved the problem. And the other thing too that these little holes do is that it drain water. There's been time when we had some drain, some drain, some rain, not drain. And the rain drained right through these holes that we yep. created. Yep, another good benefit there. So start with the lower shelves first. So I'll take this one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook it onto my side first and then hand it over to Joseph. And I'm gonna pull this in a little bit to make it easier for him to hook his side. All right. One in. 
<laughs> We're doing good. Let's do the second one. Same thing. I'm going to go in here and hook mine into place. Hand it to Joseph. Pull it in and you just pop it right into place. Dose. <laughs> All right. And the most important one, this is where the cats come out of the door onto the first top shelf. Or at least that's how we created our catio. Yours might be different, but this is for us. Um, how they come in and out. So we're very particular with where we're putting it. And I don't have it in. Is it this bottom? Is that gonna be the high? Perfect. You sure it's not slanted up like, like, like is, what I did last time? It is slanted up. So you I gotta did, move I think that I did one. it wrong. So that end needs to be higher. Yeah, so push yours in. And let Was me that a little bit of a slant like this? So the cat's a... It still works, but yeah. we want our boys to be comfortable. All right, how's that look? Voila, much better. Even. And they slide a little bit here and there, but it stays in place pretty well. Of course, it pops out when I was trying to show how well it stays in Cats place. Cats don't do that, yeah. The next thing we're gonna do, um, do we do the bars or? We can do the back. Okay, let's do the back. I guess it doesn't matter which way, but we're gonna take this foam board and we are going to put it on the back of the catio. Okay, so I want to talk to you about this foam board a little bit. This is an eight foot foam board we got at Lowe's and all we did was just cut it across and it is now the perfect size for this particular cage that is four feet uh, tall. Uh, yeah, four feet tall. So what we did with the foam board is after we cut it out, we made a couple modifications to it and the first thing we did was make the cat entry door and we thought it would be kind of fun to have a cat head. Uh, so. This is what it looks like. <laughs> and then we also cut this little hole right here. And the reason why we needed this hole is if you look at the cage, you will see this little piece right here. And what this is, is that it's a latch for a door that used to be right here. We removed the door so that we have free access for the boys to come in and out. Um, and so there's a second door down here that we don't use right now, but if you want to use it, that's another option for you. And then the other thing that we did to this board is we covered it with tape. Um, there's two reasons why we did that. The first reason is that we wanted to blend into the coach a little bit more. When it was all white, the color kind of like popped right off the coach and it was so obvious that something was right there and we wanted it to blend into the coach more so we attract less attention. And the second reason for putting the tape onto this foam board is because we figure that our cats, they would be into digging into this and scratching onto this and damaging the board. And the tape sure helps for both, again, blending into the coach and for protecting the board against our boy scratches. And the reason we have the foam board is that we want to make sure that this surface of our coach is protected. We didn't want the metal against our coach and this foam board give it good protection. Yes, and also very important, now that I'm thinking about it, we wanted to restrict the size of the entrance and exit here so the cats can't slip out of this big opening in the cage in case your window isn't exactly that size on your coach. And what are the chances of that? I mean, ours isn't exactly that size. So this is what keeps the cats going in and out and not escaping. All right, so you ready to tuck it in? Yep. And all you do is just pop it in. You might need to squeeze your... I'm, uh, I gotta line these little holes up over here. There okay. you go. Perfect. That's it. Now it's on there. So it's on there, so we don't have to worry about trying to hold the foam board and the cage together. Right. All right, so why don't you go ahead and go with your support okay. stick. Now these support bars are uh, can be purchased at any Lowe's or Home Depot store. They're actually in the fencing section. So chain link fences use these uh, in their construction. And this is a six foot tension bar, as you can see. And they're pretty easily bendable with a hammer. So if you lay this down on something and pound it with a hammer, you can get that bend in where you need it. Um, over here, where we put this locking mechanism in, that you can see has got a drill through it. And we just drill the hole through it for the screw and the locking nut to go in. And that creates that little locking mechanism. Yep, color coded again, red to red, go in between the red notches, let it rest on the red tape up here. Pull the bolt up, 
let it slide back down and it rests against the cage. And then I'm gonna do the same with mine. Going in to the yellow and up by the yellow. And holding the pin out, flipping it in, dropping the pin, holding it into place. Now the reason we color coded these is because as we were bending these support bars into the proper shape, we made sure that when they hung on the coach, they were going to be um, even. So this one might be a little bit different, might have a little bit different bend in it up here so that when it hangs on that support rail on the motorhome, uh, it's even on the cage. So you want to keep track of which side is which while you're constructing these. Now we have to say, this design and the little things we're talking about are very important because we used it for a while before we had all of these and you would be surprised at how difficult it is to put one of these rods in exactly straight and hit the right spot every time. So the little tape marks, really a good idea. <laughs> and this bolt here to keep it in place is brilliant because before we were holding onto this, we trying were to hold the weight this. of this, hold it up. I actually had this thing slide down and hit me in the shoulder before that design. It's pretty heavy and it hurts sliding down. So yeah. don't forget that little step. All right. So you ready to put it onto the coach? Yep. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and turn it so that it's set to, to okay. go onto the coach. Hang on, my side came out a little bit here. Make sure it's all good. All right, ready? Let's go. That doesn't happen if you follow the bottom up. One thing here, these will scratch your coach if you're not careful. So you want to be mindful of where these sharp ends are at all times when you're getting it set into place. Now it's really simple at this point. We're gonna go all the way to the bottom of the cage. We're gonna lift from there and you just line these stiff support rods right up to that rail. All right, ready? you ready? And we're bending our knees and we're using our knees to lift so we don't injure our back. And here we go all the way up. Slip it into this. It needs to come my way. There you go. That's it. That's all that holds it, and it's super solid. You could do pull-ups off that thing. I'm pulling down it pretty good, and nothing's happening. So but we you don't want it to swing away from the coach. So there's one last final step. Ta-da! <laughs> Bungee straps. That one just kind of keeps it in place and we'll do one more to hold it from the bottom. Yes, this one just goes right here. And this one hooks to the frame of the coach, just like that. And now there's a lot less movement. If we need to, we can always adjust these guys to create more tension. There you go. And Joseph said that was the last thing, but it's not. You cannot have a gorgeous catio with cats in there without Cat wind chime. <laughs> Gotta have my cat wind chime. No catio so. is complete without a cat wind no. chime. No. So I just hang it there. Now we have the cats hanging out. We have music and it is awesome. Oh. Okay, so we're about to take the catio off the coach. The first thing you want to do is make sure you take off that wind chime. And I'm just going to place it all right here to make it easy for right now. And you want to make sure that you also take off the bungee cords. But be really careful with the bungee cord. I had an accident with it when I wasn't very careful. I took it off and it flung at me and luckily it didn't hit my eye, my teeth, my nose. I didn't get hurt, but that was pure luck uh, and it scared me straight. And so now I'm very careful with how I move the bungee cord. So I'm gonna hold onto both of them when I work the bungee cord. That's gonna take up the first one. I and stand here to call 911. <laughs> Ta da, look at that, no injuries. <laughs> that was not fun at all. Okay, this one I can't hold onto both, but I know that that one's could fling too. So I'm gonna stand a little bit back here. And move this away and gently bring it down and remove this one. 
I like how you did the whole bungee cord safety video now. But nothing like a hey, little smack in the face if, to get that if working. I didn't have that smack, and I wouldn't know, and I did not see a safety video on bungee cord. <laughs> Let's go. This is very easy to take down. It's just the opposite of putting it back up. We're going to grab it from the bottom. And on the count of three, we're going to lift and set it down. Ready? Yep. One, two, three. And we're going to move it away from the coach to make sure we don't scratch the coach. And we're going to set it down right here. Okay, we're going to take the Catio apart now. We've taken it off of the motorhome and we're going to shrink this into a very compact form factor for storage and travel. All right, we're going to show you how to take the support bars off. So you can see they rest on the bar here and they're staying stable here. Now the reason for the stability is because of this little screw. So if you pick it up a little bit and pull that out, now that allows the bar to slip through and come out. So up here, they're just gonna finish slipping through just like that. And it's this little mechanism right here. It's just, it's just a simple lock washer and screw, lock nut and screw that um, hold it into place. Okay, so what we're gonna do next now, after the two tension bars are removed, we're gonna take the foam board off of the cage. And all I'm gonna do is move the foam board back a little bit here and slip it out. It comes out really easy. And I'll come over to this side and do the same thing. Just lift it up and there you go. Okay, we're going to collapse this cage at this point. Now, one word of caution, doesn't matter which brand you buy, all of these can be finger pinchers if you're not really careful. So we'll do our best and we're gonna do this one take through so you can see just how much fun this is. <laughs> and, and not like we've been pinched 10, 15, 20 times. We might have, I'm not gonna say one way or the other, but we've learned that it's best to do this with two people. It actually decreased the amount of pinching although it doesn't guarantee that these fingers will be saved. <laughs> and it can increase the amount of uh, friction between you and your partner. If you're not really careful, you can easily pinch the other person. So watch how this is done. <laughs> What's step number one? All right, step number one, I'm gonna have you loosen that by pushing in on the cage and moving that up. And then I'm gonna take my side and remove the first tray. And let's do the same to the second and the third tray. Go ahead and push yours in and drop it. See, pinching fingers. <laughs> Keep your fingers out of the way. And your eyes glue on your partner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one All more. Right. I'm gonna hold on to this one. <laughs> All right, there we go. So now we have all three trays removed. We can go ahead and collapse the cage. And so I'm gonna zoom in for you later, but on the cage, there are these different little locks here on both sides and they hold the cage in place. You're gonna to wanna to unloosen them real quick first. You wanna go ahead and do your whole side? Sure, I'll do this side. And this is why you wanna have two people because once you take that first side off, it's very wobbly. Yeah. And so now Joseph can hang on to that as I do my side. And I'm just gonna pop this out right here. Sometimes it's kinda of tricky. Well, remember, you're pushing that edge in. Okay, so I'm putting it See, I'm still learning. <laughs> We've only done this like 20 times, and I'm, now that I'm on video, I can have a hard time, but this is reality. Okay. And this is, again, why two people uh, is really important. So I'm gonna put this in, collapse this side. And this next part, Joseph and I always mess up, is, let's try this way first and see. Lay it down, and I think it's the other way. Wrong, wrong, it doesn't go all the way down. <laughs> so we it just doesn't go all the way up. down, figure out the next folding pattern. And, no. oh, we supposed to mess up this way. <laughs> it's a big old puzzle, you just gotta have some fun with it and be patient. But if you do notice, right here, there's a uh, set that looks like it's for a common hand grip. If you kind of line them up as you're folding it, and it'll make it easier. There's a little clip here that holds it all together as a step. And let's pick it up, the whole thing up. So this is how small it folds up. Pretty small. The side, turn it to the, show the side. And there you go. And this fits right into our um, storage area and we'll show you that in a little bit. 
but that's it's pretty light. This it's pretty light. Probably like. Let me see if I can six, carry it by myself. Six pounds. <laughs> Ten pounds, maybe. I don't know. Oh yeah, let go. I can totally carry by myself. Um, I can probably hang out here and maybe do some yoga with. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it's light. But um, there you go. It's all ready to be put away and packed up for the next trip. And there you have it. It's that easy, and you can do it on your motorhome too. In fact, we've got all the parts for everything we use to build the catio and the support rails and everything right down below the video. And if you like what you saw, please give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, any comment, leave them below and we'll be sure to answer them all. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell right next to it so you don't miss a single episode. And if you didn't like what you saw, subscribe and click the thumbs up now. <laughs> and let us know how we can make it better because we're course. open to that too. All right, so enjoy your day and uh, go build a catio for your babies. They're going to love you for it.